Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Stephen, for introducing us and welcome to this live stream. Quite an important subject here, which is the an introduction to the public sector heat decarbonisation programme. This was announced in the summer budget, a £1 billion programme to, to sort of initiate the green carbon economy and bring us out of recession. Um, that's spending on energy efficiency and in particular heat decarbonisation. Um, and I'm really pleased today to have Suad Omar from Salix Finance. We've worked with Salix Finance since uh, 2004, bringing a number of the loan scheme uh, projects to fruition um, right away, right across the public sector. So really pleased to introduce her and um, she will cover the, the, the standards um, talk to go through the basics of what this scheme's about. And then I will come in in particular to talk about what this means for schools and maths. So I'll hand over to Suad. Uh, thank you, Ed. Uh, hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, well, as, um, yeah, as um, Ed has said, the um, 1 billion de public sector decarbonization scheme was um, in announced uh, by the government or was made available by the government through BASE and ourselves, uh, first to um, fight the recession, um, help the economy again come uh, like bring back the jobs and, and um, bring back companies from the furlough, also to help support the and tackle the climate change agenda, especially in, in, in the sector on the de or the decarbonization of the heat um, systems and uh, for funding capital energy, um, energy efficiency projects and low carbon heating projects. So if we next slide <laughs> thank you so the project criteria in this slide we talk about the project criteria and uh, for um for projects to be compliant but first it has to have uh, the public sector has to receive the full benefit in terms of carbon and uh, financial benefits so if it is um, a, a project that the the public sector is building or, or setting for um for a commercial purposes that will not um, uh, qualify. So all the full carbon and um, financial savings have to go back to the public sector, benefit the public sector. The cost of um, the cost of a ton of carbon saved for the lifetime of the project has to be um, 500 or, uh, pounds or less. And we have the support too which will um, calculate for the uh, for you will calculate that for you and show whether the project is um, meeting the carbon criteria uh, which uh, the support tool is part of the um, assessment and the application so, and um, then the 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 costs that the um, the scheme will cover or your uh, that you can apply for is the capital work, any external consultancy fees, any project management fees, any fees that is related in bringing and implementing the project could be included. Uh, but unfortunately, if you have existing employee costs and if you have incurred any costs um, uh, previously, um, you cannot include it. So it's just for any money um, or any work going forward. And then it has to meet uh, Salix additionality criteria. The additionality criteria is that the project is, has not been budgeted for, which means you don't, you, um, yeah, it won't happen without the Salix funding. Then <laughs> the next, Ed. And then uh, this is the project criteria and project um, categories. So uh, Salix supports over a hundred different technologies. But um, these technologies for this scheme has been divided to categories. So any project which is uh, which will um, result in a, uh, lowering your uh, the carbon emission of your heat uh, heating systems, then that's the category one, which is will definitely meet the uh, program criteria. That's like heat uh, pumps and uh, connecting to low heat. Uh, uh, existing load heat um, network. And then you have category two is the traditional 
Salix, um, uh, uh, Salix project that have been, we have been supporting uh, for the past 20, 15 years, sorry. So it's the LED lighting, also uh, car, um, insulation, uh, double glazing, all this um, project will come under that. The three, uh, category three is um, battery technologies that uh, doesn't uh, necessarily uh, reduce any carbon, but will help you, for example, to uh, like the uh, smart meterings and so on. Um, that will help you determine which projects to carry on later on um, in, in, in previous year, um, in the future. Then technology for if you are not able to implement low heating, like heat pumps and so on, you can go move from uh, coal or oil-based um, uh, heating system to gas. So that's what is basically, and um, the next, I'm going very slowly, sorry guys. And how to apply? Well, the application, there is an application um, uh, guidance. You need to go through them, download them from our website. That's the, our website um, or, or, um, or the website where you can find this information. The next step is again to download uh, the support tool. And the support tool, as I said, it will include the compliance tool, the business case, and any further information about the project and the technologies you are implementing. And then you um, set up, a, 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 you go onto the portal, and then you set up um, an account with your um, uh, organization details and contact details, and then you upload um, the supporting tool or, or the we call it application form, which, as I said, includes this uh, the, the compliance tool and business case, along um, alongside any supporting information that you can find on the project, like all the savings calculations, all the product sheets, all the um, uh, condition, if you have any condition, um, uh, building conditions reports done in the past, anything that will help us support and assess your project. So into, if we go to the next um, uh, slide, the, this is for the assessment uh, um, process. So the assessment process will look at the feasibility and the resilience of the project and the savings, and then the financial case for that, and the, which means why, that's why you have to provide us with the, uh, pro, uh, any costs associated with, um, with this project and any savings can you, you can make. Then the governance, we need to make sure that all these projects have been approved by the public sector body. It has um, uh, like, it's probably properly monitored and um, has a clear um, in the, a purpose and, and a clear implementation schedule. There is, um, the procurement has been, uh, or it has probably properly procured. So you have to provide us with your schedule, uh, procurement documentation, or uh, just um, maybe um, um, how you will, just uh, an evidence of how you will procure it. So anything that makes it strengthening your business case, you have to provide that. And all successful applicants will receive a grant offer letter. The next uh, slide, the KD, uh, key dates, sorry, key dates for the uh, application, application close date is the 11th of January. And uh, projects, yeah, well, projects have to be completing by the 31st of March, if not, uh, the next possible date for completion is the 30th of September 2021. However, if you are looking for projects um, that, if you are looking at projects that might complete um, about around March 2022, you need to speak to us um, first. It doesn't mean like we might not fund it, but if you have any, if you are looking into that, um, then speak to us. Okay. Then there is another um, another program which is running currently as well, or a scheme, which is the Low Carbon Skills Fund. And the 
yeah, <laughs> yeah. And the purpose of the um, Low Carbon Skills Fund is to help the public sector engage uh, specialists and, and energy consultants and so on to uh, help them develop um, projects for um, especially uh, low heating, uh, low carbon heating projects for the grant uh, scheme. So, um, so it has three tiers, basically. The first tier is for um, uh, submitting an application to help you put together applications for the current scheme. Then you can also apply again to include, uh, to, uh, include uh, the cost of project management. So now if, you, if your project is compliant, you can add the project delivery or project management costs to the uh, actual grant application. But if it's not, you need to access the uh, low uh, or you are able to access the low carbon skills for that. And the second, uh, the third tier, sorry, the third tier will be for uh, developing heat decarbonization plan. And that's for any uh, public sector organization who cannot put together applications for category one projects, that's the low heating technology, low carbon heating technologies, but uh, they can, uh, they are applying for um, category uh, two or three. And that will help you. And uh, this is like a condition for the grant funding. So if you are applying to um, uh, for the grant um, to fund an LED lighting project, for example, or um, uh, uh, insulation, then you will need to commit to uh, uh, submitting a heat decarbonization plan by the 30th of September 2021. And to help you put that together, if you don't have the in-house in expertise, is to access the Low Carbon Skills Fund. And uh, the next, yeah, and that's how to apply. And again, how to apply, you go on our website and you apply um, there. And um, okay, any additional funds? Yeah, if you, and if you are applying, so the first phase you apply to is the helping you put, put together an application for, um, for the grant scheme. So that's the development of the project feasibility, surveys, um, help like the consultant who is helping you build the application. Then, um, so when you're applying, you can indicate that you are going to do um, further applications to support the delivery of the project and the heat decarbonization plan. We have a dedicated um, uh, uh, email address, which is grant at salixfinance.co.uk, which I didn't um, include, I think, in my um, my presentations, but I can leave it in the chat. Okay, I think that's that's it for me. Yeah. Or oh, the key dates. Okay, key dates for these applications. So if you are, um, uh, so the key date is the thirtieth of. Um, no, sorry, that's with the opening dates. But the key dates which are ahead now are the fourth of December for any funding needed for project development support, and that's to help you. Uh, put applications by the 11th of January and you will have um, a possibility to apply again in, by, uh, until the 11th of January for the project support, pro project delivery and the heat decarbonization plan support as well. And um, yeah, the reasons why we have this um, two application deadline is um, for the last two, um, the last two uh, elements of the funding, you can only apply to them once you've applied to the grant application. So you, you have submitted a grant application. As I said, yeah, there are a few links uh, we've provided, and I will provide you. So that's the email address for the um, Low Carbon Skills Fund. But then I will, as I said, the grant fund. Um, uh, inbox i'll just add it to the chat okay the email address there thank you ed thank you everyone that's great thank you Ashraf. so i had very whistle stop tour through that so thank you very much for that and uh, the, the the website address is on the last slide for you 
as well. We can distribute those. Um, I particularly want to just talk about what this means for schools because um, it's, it's probably quite important to try and understand where this is. It's not appropriate for everybody. And so we need to sort of differentiate that. That's the key issues here. So this slide's quite important. So the category one is heat decarbonisation. And uh, for the majority of schools, that's going to mean installing heat pumps, air source heat pumps to heat your radiators um, from, heat, from a, a heat pump air source. Ground source heat pumps are intrusive to, to put into a school. It means either putting boreholes in or, or, or taking off the land and putting it back. It's quite intrusive. We've done it very successfully, uh, for example, at King, at King Edward's Birmingham Library, but it is intent, it, it, quite, quite intrusive to your buildings. If you're, if you're a city centre and you've got a district heating scheme run by the local authority or others, then it might be good to connect to that. But this is great for universities and NHS trusts where they've got large district heating schemes is not so appropriate for schools and you could go for electrical heating but electrical heating is going to be very expensive to run because you're buying heat at 15 pence perhaps or more per kilowatt hour so um, not, probably not a good thing to go so that's the category one measures. Category two wide range of energy efficiency technologies but for yourselves it possibly is a, a really good application for getting single glazed windows to double glazing. This perhaps will get over the line and is worth thinking about. LED lighting, PV solar, roof insulation or putting insulation within the roof. All of these things are key areas to think about opportunities here. Category three will typically be, the, the key category three will be, if we're putting an air source heat pump, we might need to um, improve the electrical supply infrastructure because you'll be using electricity rather than natural gas. So that's something to, to think about. That's something we need to take on board here. Um, I think that's perhaps the key area there that would make a difference. Um, and if you've got oil firing, that's very high carbon content, about 50% more than natural gas. So oil fired systems, if you've got any oil fired systems in your schools, that's a really good school to have a look at. You'll probably get a lot more projects over the line with oil firing. So all those things are important. There is some guidance within this that if your boiler plant has five years left to run, let's not rip the boiler plant out. Let's authorize that we will replace for a decarbonized source in five years time but not do it now and not get the funding now, but then that allows us to fund category two measures. But I'm afraid within schools, what we're finding is you have to do the category one measure in order to bring projects over the line. Let's just have a quick look at the financials then. If you, if you put an air source heat pump into your school to replace the boiler plant, you'd be buying electricity at 15p a kilowatt hour. That would give you delivered heat with a COP co coefficient of performance of three, it would give you delivered heat at about five pence, three units of heat out, for every one unit of electricity in. So you're getting five pence. Now that's an increase on gas because your gas cost would be about three, three and a half P delivered heat. So you're going 40% increase in your cost of running your school by, by decarbonizing with an air source heat pump. So what the, the idea here is, it, is it ideally we'd be double glazing your windows, improving the insulation and reducing infiltration into your building, all of which would reduce the heat load to bring this back to fiscally neutral. We might change your lights to LED or put PV solar on the roof to reduce your electricity consumption. So it's a holistic package. This can actually work for a school. That's the sort of theory behind it and what we're trying to achieve. This is quite, quite an important slide. And it's, it's come straight off some analysis in the first grant application that we put in actually for schools. And um, the financial compliance career criteria is 500 pounds of capital contribution per tonne of CO2 saved over the lifetime of that technology. And at Zenergy, we've done some analysis on some primary schools here. So this is probably the worst case scenario. Primary schools open, heating going from eight o'clock to about four o'clock, five days a week, nothing at weekends, holidays are all in there. So, so this is the lowest operating hours. And when we look at the technologies and the, compl the financial compliance, air source heat pumps get well over the line at 250 pounds uh, per tonne of CO2. But you'll see the windows at 800, um, this, we'd only get 500 against those, so this would need sub, sub, to be subsidised. That's what, 62% contribution. Roof, flat roof, ripping off a flat roof, very expensive. It would not be covered. So you'd be looking at partial grants for these things. Hello. 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 Hello, Anne. Sorry about that. How are you? I'm good. No, it's fine. I'm really glad. I'll, I'll, I'll try and carry on over that, I'm afraid. So, so, so apologies yeah. for that. Um, 
So yeah, no, that's fine. Well, you can see the flat financial compliance criteria that we've got there. So what we're saying is we need a mix of technologies to make this work. So an air source heat pump going in at 250 pounds would support the windows and PV solar on the roof. As a, as a package, this could get you 100% funding, of course. So, and we may be bringing in some cavity brick wall insulation, some loft insulation, we can get it in above your ceiling voids, things like that might all bring this up to a package that can actually work and get you the full grant. The key things influencing these compliance, we look at this right at the very beginning, is hours of use. So extended hours of use will help this application to get you the 100% funding. So if you're working into the evenings, weekends, community use, if you've got leisure centres on site that you open up to the community, if you work during the holidays, if you've got a residential school, a special school, which is heated to higher levels, perhaps with residences, all of these things will get you nearer to getting that 100% grant. If you've got an oil fired boiler plant, it's high carbon content. Again, that will get you more contributions and perhaps get you the 100% grant here. Um, also, it's worth looking at your display energy certificates. That's our first point to look at. If you've got a poor heating performance, this reflects your heating, reflects your building structure. And again, that will then tell us that there's something to go out here. So some schools we've got putting grants in for, we're getting heating performances up at, up at nearly 300 kilowatt hours per meter squared, and we will be able to get all of the measures through there. So again, these are things to look at at the front end. So what's, um, what's our approach to this? Well, our approach is, is please contact us. We'll be pleased to talk to you. It will not be for all your schools at all. We're looking selectively at getting the right one. So you typically I set up a Zoom call, talk this through. Have you got any existing oil fired or decarbonized schools? So we can invest in measures on those schools quite straightforwardly. Let, we can download your decks, give us the name of your schools and your mats, and we can download your, the deck certificates here very quickly. It takes about an hour and I can come back to you and tell you where the thermal consumption is poor, where you've got the opportunities for funding. Interesting to grab out any condition surveys you've got. Where are the boilers needing replacement fairly quickly in the next year or two? Because if, if it's five or 10 years down the line, this is not really for you at the moment. So we need boiler replacements fairly quickly. Um, what, how are you going to insulate your building? Is, is there a need for single to double glazing investments? Again, that would be great to put, bring that in. So any condition survey work. And then from there, we can put together a skills application very quickly. We can give you the, uh, our thoughts on this agree that um, probably take an hour or two and then you can submit this in for approval that would then allow us well, it'll take about five days for approval there's a bit of backlog on this unfortunately at the moment but uh, will be approved fairly quickly it'll then allow us to come to your school and put together a survey put together the, the plan and start to complete your grant application for you so this is fairly fast track we need to get this in for the 11th of january so we need to get moving fairly quickly the grant app, we, we will then help you through that grant application process, providing all the documentation and evidence um, and get that, that in for you. So just to give you an example, I've got a mat at the moment, which I've just spoken to, large, large mat, 60 odd schools. We're putting in for six schools, three of which have got oil fired boilers and the others that have got single glazing that needs to go to double and pretty poor heating performance. And that those six schools amongst those 60 are really good. And we think we'll be able to get a, a significant funding for those schools. Progress this as quickly as possible. You want to take part of it. Remember that there will be, there may well be more grants like this. Um, obviously, this climate change is, is gathering momentum. Net zero carbon is gathering, gathering momentum. So please recognise that there will be more opportunities. Um, putting a number of schools together in a bid allows us to play the tunes on that five hundred pounds per ton as well. This is the skills fund application. Ten simple questions. We can answer those very, very quickly for you and get those skills fund application in very fast. The grant application is a bit more detailed. There's lots of carbon calculations and capital cost calculations, all of that type of things. So that's a little bit more involved, but we'll take you through that process. And there's a the contact details for both ourselves and Salix. If you have any questions, hopefully they'll be answered. They are being picked up by, the, by my team and they will be answered to you if you put any questions in the chat. Also, you go on to the energy exhibition area. We've got some frequently asked questions there. And also you can book in a one-to-one -to, -one to talk about what this could do for you and how we might be able to help you. So thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you, bye-bye.